This is a speed test using two decks of cards, okay? Both decks can be examined, both decks can be shuffled. And the fact that you're using two decks makes it a nice, powerful closer for a bit of a close-up show here. Look, take a deck. Take a deck, give it a bit of a shuffle here. Chris, you're gonna pick a card, but I'm not gonna have you remove it from the deck of cards. That's for the amateur. Here we go. Let's just do this, my friend. Say, let's use the French word, arrête, arrête for stop, anytime. You got one? Yeah. Keep it in mind, okay? I'm gonna give you a deck of cards. We're gonna put both decks, actually, inside their cases, okay? Keep it. And I'm gonna give you a deck of cards. You're thinking of a card, I'm gonna give you the deck right there. We're gonna do a bit of a drag race to see who can move more quickly, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to take the cards out of your case in a second. I want you to go through I want you to find the card you have in mind. I want you to take it out. I want you to turn it around so it's facing the wrong way. I want you to put it back inside the cards and I want you to put the cards in the case. You ready? And I'm gonna to try to do it at the same time. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Everyone's just thinking, man, I hope fish crinis. That's it. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we were going to do a speed thing where you went through your cards and I was supposed to go through my cards, find the card you're thinking of, somehow turn it over, jam it back in, jam everything back in the card case. But I actually am gonna go down to the table really slowly here. No cut, no cut, no cut. Cut me, cut me, Nick, no cut. So Chris, you went through and you turned over a card. Well, I decided that the fastest thing wouldn't be to use my manual skills, but would be to use the power of, oh, lordy, lordy, sweet, sweet magic. So you'll see that I actually went through my cards too, and I turned over only one card. And hopefully we're gonna find that we both turned over the same card. I love the invisible deck. The invisible deck is probably one of the world's most famous trick decks of cards, all right? And because I love it so much, I've created many different tricks and handlings and ideas with this thing. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you are familiar with an invisible deck, probably even own one. If you don't, I'm gonna put a link below this video uh, to my website. I sell invisible decks. In fact, they come along with a DVD, a full length DVD with a whole bunch of ideas. However, right now, you don't have to purchase a darn thing um, because this does not use an invisible deck. Now, the reason I mention the invisible deck is because traditionally, the, the trick with the invisible deck is someone thinks of a card. They're thinking of a card. And that card impossibly ends up turned over in the pack. And so for years, I've been playing with many different ways to do this with an ordinary deck. So I don't have to switch cards, so I can be in the middle of performance. Someone can shuffle and examine the cards, and then I can go into an effect where they're thinking of a card, where they will swear later on, okay, I, I was thinking of a card, and somehow it ended up turning over and possibly in the pack. So that's what I'm doing with this. Now, this really only requires one slide, but it's not an easy slide. It's an advanced slide. It will take time and you need to, uh, you know, like with all these slides, you need to get them down so they're so smooth that you don't have to think about them, that you can be confident about it, feel no stress, and choose the right moment to do this slide. This slide is called the center reverse. I love magicians. Oh, you mean you reverse a card in the center? Is it called the center reverse? Yep, that's the name. Uh, and it's by Paul LePaul. Uh, from what I understand, Marlowe has a similar move, Ed Marlowe, but Paul LePaul was definitely before, and it's in the card magic of Paul LePaul. The first step of Paul LePaul's center reverse is to have someone peek at a card, and I'm going to use the very traditional method. I'm sure a bunch of you are familiar with it by now here on the channel, and that is where I take the cards and I bevel them. And so they're normally sitting flat in the hand, but here I'm going to push them a little to the right so they're beveled. There's a bit of an angle there. And that allows me, and in fact, it's not just a straight, okay? But there's even a little bit of a, not a fan of the cards, but it's, it's kicked over a little in the, on the top more than the bottom. What that allows me to do then is to go through the cards, have someone call, stop, show them their card, and the deck closes up. And you don't want any big gap showing, even though what I have here is the flesh of my fingertip. The pinky, my, just my pinky tip is keeping a gap 
directly below where they stop. Okay, that alone will take practice. Now the center reverse. The center reverse happens when you're squaring up the cards and what I like to do is an 180, it's 100, uh, is it 360? No, I guess it's a 180 or 360 or a 4007. Okay, you can do that too. So here's what you're gonna do. The ha right hand comes over. Now this is like a traditional side steal, but you're not gonna perform the traditional side steal. What you're gonna do is this, here's the exposed view. I'm gonna open up the deck a little bit, number one. I'm gonna open it up, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch. Number two, the left fingertips, not the bottom, not the first finger, the other fingers are gonna push out the card a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Between the right uh, third finger and pinky, I'm gonna clip this little, little corner as little as I can. I'm gonna clip it between those two, okay? Then watch what happens, I love this. Just by opening the deck wide enough, the card automatically, because of the clipped corner, comes right out and the left fingers now push the card back in and you close it up. Let me show you it again, and this time a little bit quicker. They call stop, got the break, you come over here, you push, and in. Now I want you to see in performance, when I move, now, you know, this is a very important part of sleight of hand, is not just the micro details, but the larger actions on the macro level. I know that sounds sort of academic, but it does mean something. And moving from a peak down to this, when I move from eye level right down to here, in that larger action, there's definitely time they kind of refocus. So I can have a card peaked at like, let's say the nine of hearts up here, as I bring the hands down, do the move, okay, and square just takes a second and the nine of hearts is now reversed in the pack. So the whole performance is based on that one slide. Spectre can shuffle the deck, they call stop, they peek at a, you take, uh, they call stop, you do the, the Paul the Paul center reverse here like this as you square up and you get in the card case, the card goes in like this and trick's done. They think the trick's just about to start. Oh no, no, it's quite done. The one card they're thinking of from a shuffle deck is reversed in here. Now, sometimes what I'll do to people right now to really suggest that both decks are identical at this point, that nothing, I haven't done anything, is I'll say, um, where do you want the magic to happen? With which deck do you want the magic to happen? Sort of a, a magician's choice, equivocate. They point to this one, I say, great, that's where the magic will happen. They point to this one, I say, great, you take that, you're gonna handle that one. And I just sort of move forward like that, okay? So, but either way, they get the deck, you ask them. Now, you know, it's funny, because one of the things I found with the invisible deck that I found frustrating is it is not clear to people how much work and time it actually takes to go through, find a card, turn it over, square the cards up, put them back in the case. So I want, I came up with this presentation, this handling, which really brings home how much effort would be required to do it. How could you, so they go through, they find the card. Um, they, and I, you know, I just want to double check the card here. They go through, they find the card. So we're dealing with the four of clubs, okay. Because I love final images. I think they really make tricks. So they go through their cards, okay. And the whole time I'm, you know, people, I set it up as if I'm going to drag race with them. But then people are looking over at me like thinking, well, why aren't you starting? Aren't you going to go through the cards? Don't you have to ask him what his card is, etc." So while they're all great theater, they, he goes through. He's looking for his card. He turns over his card. He puts it back inside the pack like this, squares it up like this. And when he's done, sometimes I'll even just look at him and say, I beat you just by a second, creating curiosity and a response to the curious statement. You get to show the results. And I love that. And this image at the end here, going through. And you don't want to just go do through and show the four and then show. It's so much better if you go through the face up cards. And you guys who are familiar with card magic and theater know this is the way to do this. Then have somebody else this whole thing of having two decks and a few spectators involved really builds the impossibility, the inherent drama of this. Then this final image is, you know, for any group bigger than four or five people, you do this, it's a guaranteed applause cue. It's just that kind of powerful card trick. Did someone say free prizes? Every week, every single week of the year, I give away free prizes right here in the channel. Uh, and it's DVDs and it's gimmicks and it's gaffes and it's mostly next level stuff directly from my own Sankey Magic website. So uh, on Tuesdays, because people ask me, how does this work again? Tuesdays, I usually post a video 
and I put a, com a question right below the video, find some crazy question like, hey, have you ever done a card trick with a, a bunch of oranges or some crazy magic question? And then people start posting comments, comments, comments. And you know, for the first couple of hours, every Tuesday, I read your comments and you guys know that. I read the comments, I reply because People talk and I know some guys when they have 25,000 subscribers, you know, they say, oh, I really care about it. And they're up to a couple of hundred thousand and they don't read. I give a crap about these things. I love staying in touch with you guys. You guys are funny. You got great magic ideas. You're very playful with the comments. And I love your imaginations. So uh, yeah, for the first couple of hours, I'm always reading your comments on a Tuesday. That's the contest question. Uh, and then usually the following week on the following Tuesday, when I post uh, the new question right below there, usually at the comment pinned to the top will be a list usually of the 12 people that won from last week. To collect your prize, just send an email to contact at sankeymagic.com uh, with your name and your shipping address and we'll ship you out your free prize. It's that simple. So subscribe to the channel, win those free prizes, and most of all, please get that I really, really appreciate you guys watching and interacting with me and together we're sharing our passion for magic and deception and just all around upsetting Tom Foolery. So thank you. Ready? Here we go. I wish that meant something. I really, really do.